Welcome to this introduction video on the Fable Calculator. Our objective for this video is to help you learn why we have created the Fable Calculator, how it is constructed, and to begin to understand its overall structure. The Fable Calculator is an accounting tool that focuses on the agricultural sector. It shows the evolution of multiple objectives related to the food and land use systems over 2000 to 2050, and how alternative assumptions on key parameters can increase or decrease the likelihood to meet sustainability objectives. The Fable Calculator has been developed for the Fable Initiative under the Food and Land Use Coalition to better understand how countries could transition towards more sustainable systems, how countries can meet the Sustainable Development Goals, the Paris Agreement, and other national objectives. The Fable Consortium currently comprises research teams from 20 countries who did not always have access to integrated models that could represent the evolution of land use and food systems at the national level. We have developed the Fable Calculator to have a model that could easily be adapted to different countries and transferred even to non-modelers. The Fable Calculator is a model that follows various steps of calculations where, with the exception of the first step, all other steps are dependent on one or several variables, which are computed in the previous steps. This is represented by the arrows in this figure. The first step is the computation of human demand for agricultural products, 76 products in total. Computed demand and assumptions on trade are used to compute the livestock production and the crop production. We calculate livestock production first because we also need to estimate the demand for animal feed to compute the total crop production. Then, estimated production is used to compute cropland and pasture area. If there is not enough land available for the required agricultural land expansion, production and consumption are adjusted. Utilizing Excel, we ensure that the calculator runs on most computers. Also, it does not require advanced programming skills to understand and modify the formulas. You can download the open calculator for the region called Rest of Asia and Pacific. We will use it as an example throughout these tutorials. You can find on the welcome page the countries that are included in this region, the link to the documentation, the description of the structure of the workbook that should help you navigate through it, and the sharing conditions. The Fable Calculator comprises four main types of worksheets. In light red are the ones related to scenarios. In yellow, the ones related to the visualization of the main results indicators and objectives. In green, the ones related to the computation. And in gray, the ones that contain the input data. There are two other important worksheets. The change log worksheet allows you to document all the changes you make to the calculator and track differences across versions. The Senaton worksheet with all the key results and parameters of the model, which you will need to analyze and explain your results. That will also allow you to compare your results with the other users of the Fable Calculator. The computation worksheets follow the order of the calculations shown in the previous slide. For example, in step one, the model calculates human demand, and this is done in the green calculation worksheet labeled with the number one using data from the respective gray worksheet labeled with the number one as well. Have a look at the scenario selections worksheet. Each table corresponds to one parameter of the model. For instance, population, diets, productivity, trade, or constraints on agricultural land expansion. You can test the impact of alternative values of this parameter on your objectives by deleting the existing cross and entering the cross 
in a new role. For instance, let's select a higher population growth scenario from SSP1 to UN High. And now look at the impacts on the results on the yellow worksheets. Does higher population growth have the impacts you expected on the system? Which other scenarios could mitigate these impacts? This will be the focus of our next video.